My review of Acuroscale's Class 92 should have been done in one take, but issues that developed on my initial review model prevented that from happening, and I needed a second model to complete the task. Thus far, that second model has held up well, doesn't take away from concerns based on my previous experience and the experience of viewers to this channel over the last seven days. It's definitely time to take a closer look. Thanks for joining for what will be the second and concluding part of my Acuroscale Class 92 review. As we've already completed a number of the main review elements in part one, this will be a shorter review than usual. As I don't intend to revisit what I covered in that first review in any detail, you may wish to view it before this one to ensure you have the full context when I get into the updated scoring and final recommendation. We'll kick off with a summary review of the issues experienced by viewers to the channel with their Class 92 models, with an emphasis on the running performance issue that has required returns by all who've experienced it. We'll then revisit the scoring based on the viewer feedback and also my experience with 92032, which is my second class 92 from Acura Scale and which only arrived during the week. After that, we'll get into my final recommendation and my guidance to both existing buyers and potential buyers based on the data I have in front of me. Okay, let's get into it. In my part one review, I called out two items that could best be described as areas for improvement in the future specifically the visible PCB and the profile of the pantograph blades when in the retracted position. The general feedback so far is that no one sees these as showstoppers, that they may take a little gloss off the overall model. I did hear some definite sound distortion when using the default volume on my first model, 92003, but I haven't noticed it as badly on 92032. If you watch the full running session for 92032, which I've already posted, you will hear distortion on the horn that plays while in the tunnel towards the end of that video. It's not as bad as on my original model, but it's still not perfect either. Two other issues I didn't reference in part one were highlighted by a number of viewers. These were the side grills falling off across a number of models, and a lot of concern around the NEM pocket assembly which was loosening under load. Now I didn't experience either of these issues, but a sufficient number of people did comment on these, so I will factor that in the final scoring. A number of other, more one-off issues were raised, which you'll always tend to see on any new model, so I won't go into those here. The substantive issue from part one was the development of erratic running and the appearance of high current spikes on the locomotive that effectively cut short my testing. Based on feedback from the comments and pending any feedback from a cure scale, let's take a look at what we know on this particular issue. So what are the indicators that this problem is occurring on your model? you'll see poor running performance, particularly from the mid-range onwards. At the low speed, you can be fooled into thinking the locomotive is still running correctly. It manifests as the locomotive speeding up and slowing down autonomously without you doing anything on your controller. It also manifests a high level of steady state current, and this is typically greater than 300 milliamps for the loco on its own. You see high current spiking, typically in excess of 500 milliamps, and I've seen it all the way up to 900 milliamps. And this again is with the locomotive running on its own. Some people have commented that they noticed a noticeable warming on the model. And I'm sure if you did run it in this state for a period of time, you will see some warming on the model and ultimately potentially other failures occurring. And it can occur under both DC and DCC. So what is the sort of time horizon before you start seeing this issue? Now one viewer in the comments reported seeing it immediately, out of the box, while others have seen it after a few hours, and on my model I noticed it after about eight hours of running time. After that we just don't know, as a lot of people have only had these models for a number of weeks and wouldn't have been running them for an extended period of time. So how common is this problem? Well including my own model, and those referenced in the comments, I've noted 10 occurrences. Now I looked at my statistics on YouTube and just over a thousand individual viewers looked at my initial part one review. And certainly not all of those actually had any of these models. So that percentage of 10 occurrences does seem a little bit high to me. And until we've got more information, I'm going to have to factor that in terms of the final scoring. And just one data point which I didn't have from my initial review 
And that was the actual current draw under maximum speed. I did complete that test on this particular locomotive, 920032, and I got a stable figure of 230 milliamps running at max speed with the loco on its own. It was running slightly higher at about 250, but I did notice after a number of circuits, it did stabilize at that 230 uh, milliamp maximum. And it was probably going between about 210 and 230 as it traversed its way around the track. It will be different depending on where you've got pickups, etc. on the track. So you will see some variation. Now that's in sharp contrast to a failed locomotive where you'll see well in excess of 300 milliamps of a steady state current. And you'll see those spikes occurring of 500, 600, 700 milliamps. And I've been using a DCC concept alpha meter to actually do that current measurement under DCC. And as I mentioned, this problem does occur under DC as well. Okay, let's take an updated look at the scoring. So for the running performance, this is unchanged from part one, which was a 9.5. And similar to the first model, I wasn't able to achieve the prototypical scale, maximum scale speed on the second model either. Uh, so that's the 0.5. Appearance and detail, I've altered this a little bit because of the feedback on the two issues related to the PCB and the pantograph, and I've increased this by 0.5 to a 9.5. In terms of the overall model, that's probably a fair score, so I'm happy to do that. For the sound, again, I've adjusted this score because the second model was certainly better from a volume perspective, so you're less likely to have to tweak that volume setting, uh, that global volume setting on the model based on my experience on the second model. And again, the feedback I've got in the comments would kind of concur with that as well. So I've upped that one from a 9.0 to a 9.5. Uh, extra variance is the same. Uh, build quality and packaging, however, is where I've taken into account, I get the feedback I've been getting in the comments. Uh, so the issues around the, the, the NEM coupler assembly and some weaknesses on that, which people are definitely seeing. Uh, the issues with the side grills that have been falling off for a number of people and then the substantive issue of the running performance and just the frequency of that being relatively high with 10 occurrences from the comments. If ultimately over time that was seen to be less of an issue I'm fine to change that score but I think right now I have got to go with what I have and I've probably cut as curious get a bit of slack on some other models in the past where issues were a little bit more prevalent than I factored in into my scoring so I don't think for anybody who's seen this issue is going to have a problem with that 7.5 score. Perhaps people who haven't seen it will have a problem with it. I do have to balance this up here. So it, there is an issue there. There still is. 10 models did have this issue based in the past week, based on the people who, ex, who commented on my site. And that's a very small percentage of, I would say, the customer base of this particular model. So 7.5 it is. So overall, that gets gives a score of 9.0 out of 10 uh, for a model which I probably would have been hoping was closer to 9.5 9.6 that's kind of where I probably would have hoped this model might have ended up but I guess there are some items there and they're real uh, they're measured and hence this is not based on just a, a very subjective view I'm trying to be as objective as possible here I have to factor in the issues people have had and in particular the 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 issue with the running performance and until that gets better characterized both in terms of its frequency and the nature of the issue and its likelihood to to occur for somebody in the future it, this unfortunately is, is the scoring we're at it's still a very strong score it's still a very strong model uh, so that brings us into my final summary let's go into that from here while i was midway through my initial review of 92003 I was very much coming to the conclusion that this was my favourite model of 2022. While there are a few niggly areas for improvement, this model comes with smooth and refined running performance, overall excellent appearance and sound, along with comprehensive lighting features and smooth action pantographs. Overall I really like this model, and if anything I have a preference for the GBRF livery on my second model over the more bland livery of 92003. So what's the problem then? Well, unfortunately there is a problem. With 10 identified failures from the comments, including my own, a cloud currently hangs over this model from a reliability perspective. The ultimate resolution may be very simple and straightforward, and I sincerely hope it is. But until such time as we have a better characterization of this particular issue and its frequency, there is an unknown factor for this model, which I haven't experienced on any other models since I started this channel. 
For those who have models who have been flawless since they put them on their layout, you may be wondering what all the fuss is about. Still, 10 failures reported on a small channel like mine, so early in the life cycle, cannot be ignored. If you decide to make a purchase right now, AcuraScale support are clearly your safety net. And if you do encounter this or other issues, they will sort you out one way or another, so you can rest assured of that. Given this, I would tend towards taking the risk rather than missing out on this model altogether, or at least having to wait another number of years before there's a respin. If you do purchase or have already purchased, I would just advise that you undertake my recommended health check to at least give yourself some reassurance that the model you have is fully functioning and that you can discover any early life failures as soon as possible. It's no guarantee of avoiding downstream failure, but at least it provides an initial screening and if you do run into problems, you'll be able to get them sorted early on under warranty. So the Class 92 is a superb model that does have a problem which remains to be fully characterised and resolved. If it's a motor problem, similar to the Class 55 Deltic, then at least that should put a boundary on the scope of the problem and hopefully will be no more prevalent than on that particular model. If it's something else, then we have to wait and see. For now, there's a calculated risk here and it's a risk that I believe is worth taking. So far, I've been very pleased with 92032 and I'm happy to wait for a root fix to be implemented on 92003 before it is returned to me. I hope this video can help you make an informed decision one way or another. If your model has shown symptoms of the failure mode I've covered in this video, then please let me know in the comments and be sure to contact AcuraScale support as soon as possible. In general, if you have one of these models, please share your experiences with the model in the comments. It's a huge benefit to other modelers to get this first-hand perspective, so thanks to everyone who has already shared their input in the part one video, and thank you in advance to any contributors for this one. So thanks for watching today. Hope to see you on the next one. And in the meantime, take care and happy modeling. So what is my guidance to somebody who already has a model or who purchases a new model or receives a model in the next few days? First thing you do is you need to take that model out of the box, do a visual inspection on it, make sure there's no issues there. And then you need to run the model in. And you can do that on a rolling road or if you've got a suitable test circuit to run it in on. One thing I should say is even under load, because this is a heavy model, the current consumption does not increase dramatically. And I've probably seen a, probably roughly about a 300 milliamp peak current with the load that you've seen in the most recent video for 92032. The load I did use with 92032 is a relatively heavy, heavy load. Uh, those cargo wagons would be, say, a medium resistance and so are the IPA wagons uh, and the IZA wagons as well. So that was a, what I would describe as certainly a medium load, not a light load. So what else do you need to do with your model uh, to kind of hopefully validate you don't have an, an out-of-box issue? The other thing I would do is make sure you test all of the lighting functions, and if you've got DCC, to test the pantograph functions as well. There are test functions for the pantograph, for both the front and rear one, which are independent. Now I did notice out of the box for both of the models that Pantograph 1 was in the upright position and stuck in that position when I did my initial running. And it did require me to reset the decoder a couple of times to actually get that Pantograph to retract and for the normal functioning of the select Pantograph function to work uh, for both models. Regardless of that, the test functions for testing the Pantographs worked in each case. The only difference being with the front pantograph in the raised uh, state if you do the test function for that it will lower the pantograph and raise it again typically both pantographs should be in the lowered state in which case the test function will actually raise them and lower them i'm not sure what this issue is but there is some sort of logic issue there uh, with these locomotives initially when you get them out of the box and as i said resetting the decoder fixed it for me i did get some suggestions from a cure scale uk support to potentially take off the cover that there might be a, a connection issue etc Obviously, that wasn't the case. I'm not really putting this down as a major issue, but just to note it. So once you've run in your model, I think it is important to perhaps run that model at full speed. Now, you do need to have a circuit probably suitable for running models at high speed, and some people don't, and that's fine. Uh, I think the alternative to that is actually putting a load on your model. Uh, so I think you should look to do that and perhaps run the model for a couple of hours under load or continue to run it for a number of hours on your rolling road. That's something I did with 92032, as well as running it a number of times as part of photographing the running session. 
none of this is going to guarantee anything apart from the fact that you will pick up a very early life failure obviously and some people have seen these failures occur either out of the box or after running them in uh, so it's good to actually get that out of the way and know that you don't have an early life failure on your hands which you can obviously get a treat of under warranty i think the biggest mistake people can make with this model is just to keep it in a box don't put it anywhere near a track and then perhaps take it out of the box in 12 months time when it's out of warranty and discover you have an issue and then you're gonna to have to pay to get that issue repaired so i think if you if you're purchasing these models even if you're purchasing them perhaps to store them maybe you're going to just keep them in a cabinet don't intend to run them if you've got some way of actually powering them up then please do so check the model out give it a once over in terms of the electrical functions if all is okay then that's fine if not, then obviously you can go back and try to get uh, get it either repaired or replaced under warranty.